Hi, my name is Stacy Church, and I am coming to you from my home office in Stanton, Texas, and I am wanting to share with you a little bit of the story of David Hiram Smith. David was the youngest son of Joseph and Emma. He actually was born about five months after Joseph was assassinated. As a young person, he became accomplished as an author, an artist, a poet, and a musician. Um, when he was a little older, his brother Joseph III took over leadership of the reorganization and David joined him and became involved in the ministry with Joseph. He became a very good preacher and he was in a very effective missionary for the church. He traveled throughout the Midwest and to California and Utah. Um, and while on those trips, he touched the hearts of any congregation that he was there with his wonderful hymns of faith and devotion to God and the cause of the restoration. Perhaps that how he, that's how he earned the moniker, the sweet singer of Latter-day Israel. So there's a story about David traveling to Utah in 1872. He got on the train in Omaha, Nebraska, and was, I guess, immediately drawn into a debate with another man about continued revelation. Now David won the debate. He was very scripturally literate and he uh, sat down calmly and ate his lunch and watched the beautiful scenery go by. On the morning of July 4th, he got up early and joined some other people up on the top car. It was called the train's open observation car where he talked, laughed, and sang songs as they flew along over the high trestle work and throughout the dark tunnels. I imagine the sweet singer of Israel made quite an impact on the people gathered in that car. That may have been his last trip because after that, he started becoming ill with depression and confusion. And unfortunately, he eventually ended up in an asylum. That's where he spent the last 27 years of his life. His musical legacy, however, continues to live on. He had several hymns published, and there is one in Community of Christ Sings, and it's page 186. It's called, Let Us Pray for One Another. The words to this hymn are not David's original hymns. They were edited by Maurice Draper in the 1970s. He wanted the words to be a little more uplifting. The words David had written were sometimes rather dark. And Maurice wanted this hymn to go in a different way. So he edited the words. I'm going to read the first verse and the third verse. Um, I think they kind of help fit in with what we're supposed to be doing right now in the midst of this uh, pandemic. And any time actually that we can pray for one another. So here we go. Let us pray for one another that our minds and hearts may blend as we grow in love and mercy day by day till life shall end. We can see how others need us. May we also dare to say that in love we'll share together for each other. Let us pray. O'er the world the day is dawning through the Spirit's light and power when the people of all nations sense the challenge of this hour that our lives may now be given to each other in God's way, in the name of Christ the Savior, for each other, let us pray. I love this hymns, I love hymns anyway, but I like this story because it reminds me that music can bring us together anywhere, even on the top of a train car, and that words written even during the reorganization can still guide us today.